How's it going everybody? In this video, we are gonna go over the problem, simplify path. This problem has been asked at Facebook a lot recently, so that's why I wanted to go over it. Before we get started, I wanted to let you know about my technical interview prep platform, Algos with Michael. So if you're preparing for coding interviews, I highly recommend you check it out. This platform is different from other coding prep websites because I teach you the patterns to solve various categories of interview problems, such as sliding window, top K element, and binary search. Learning these patterns is like having a cheat sheet because you will know exactly how to approach the problem based on the type of problem it actually is. So specifically for my YouTube audience, you guys get a discount using the code ALGOHELP. All right, without further ado, let's get into this problem. So we are given a string path, which is an absolute path starting with a slash to a file or directory in a Unix style file system convert it to the simplified canonical path. In a Unix style file system, a period refers to the current directory, a double period refers to the directory up a level, and any multiple consecutive slashes are treated as a single slash. For this problem, any other format of periods, such as a triple dot, are treated as file or directory names. The canonical path should have the following format. The path starts with a single slash, any two directories are separated by a single slash. The path does not end with a trailing slash. And then the path only contains the directories on the path from the root directory to the target file or directory. And so we want to return the simplified canonical path. I know this problem has a massive description. It might be confusing, but you'll soon see that this problem is pretty easy once you know what data structure to use. So for this problem, we have a couple different characters that our algorithm should be aware of. So we could have a period, a double period, a double slash, and then a single slash. Those are all of the different like character orderings that our algorithm should be aware of. So a single period just means that we want to stay in the current directory right? And then a double period means we need to go back to the previous directory. And then a double slash is just treated as a regular slash. And then the slash tells us that we are separating two directories or maybe uh, separating a directory from a file name. So we'll say separate files. So these are all the things that our algorithm needs to handle. So looking at this first example, slash home slash, we don't want this last slash. We want to return slash home, right? And then example two, we have slash dot dot slash. So dot dot means that we're going to go back to the previous directory. Well, there's nothing before this point. So we're just going to output just a slash because we don't want the ending slash. And then this didn't actually do anything. So we're just left with a single slash. All right, let's go over another example outside of what leak code gives us. So let's say we had slash foo slash slash bar slash period slash baz slash period period and then slash far right so this is a pretty big path what we want to do is process the strings from right to left right we don't want to process from left to right because for example let's say we had like dot dot in the beginning if we process that in the beginning, that would give us an incorrect answer. We need to make sure to handle the strings from the right to the left. So starting with far, right, that for sure would be in our final answer, right? So let's just write that. We'll say far. And then we have a slash. That would get added. Now we're looking at dot dot. So dot dot means that we're going to go up a directory. 
So that means we would need to remove the directory baz, right? And then we're going to process the period, right? Period just means current directory. So we're not going to add anything here. Then we're going to process the bar. So bar would get added to our result. And then we're going to process the slash slash. And as we went over, slash slash is just treated as a single slash. So we're just going to add a single slash there. And then we would process foo. So that gets added. And then we have a leading slash. So this would be our final answer, slash foo, slash bar, slash far. So what data structure should we use for this problem? Well, we processed the last elements first. Whenever you process last elements first, you should immediately be thinking of a stack data structure. All right, so let's go over the algorithm for this specific example. So we want to process all of the files and directory names, right? So that would be foo, bar, the period, baz, the dot, dot, and then far, right? But we, we still have like all of these different slashes. It really complicates our algorithm to process the characters you know, character by character. It makes it really difficult. When I tried this problem a few years ago, my initial approach was to process from right to left each individual character and have, you know, various logic to handle all of the edge cases, right? And I'll show the code right here. As you can see, it's just, it's horrendous. It made it so complicated. But there's a neat little trick with the Java API that we can utilize. Specifically, we can split around all of the slashes. So essentially, we can call whatever the string is dot split on a slash character. So after calling the split function, we would be given foo bar period baz period period and then far, right? I don't know about you, but this is a way easier uh, data structure to utilize instead of trying to process each individual character. So after calling our split function, this is where we'd want to initialize a stack data structure. So now what's cool after calling this split is the only characters we need to you know, handle like an extra edge case for is a period and a double period. Pretty simple. So starting out, we're looking at foo. Since that's not a period or a double period, we can just add foo into our stack. And then we go to bar, and then bar gets added, right? And then we look at a period. Well, a period just means current directory, so we don't have to do anything, right? We can just move forward. And then we got baz, so that gets added, right? And then we have a period period. So since this means we want to remove the previous directory or file, we're going up a level, that means that we can just remove the last element we added to our stack. So baz will just get removed. And one thing I wanna mention here is if we had an example where we had a leading period period, right? And then we had you know some other uh, strings here. When we go to process this period period, we would need to make sure that before popping, we check that the stack is not empty. So that's just an extra edge case we have to consider. And then we're gonna to move to far, and that means we're going to add far into our stack. And now we have successfully looped over all of the contents of this path. Now we just need to build our file path. So every canonical path has a leading slash, and then we're going to do foo slash bar, 
slash far, right? Because we're just taking the contents from our stack and building our canonical string. So slash foo slash bar slash far would be our answer. So the two things for making this problem solvable was one, using a stack data structure, and two, using the split API so that we wouldn't have to process each character individually. All right, let's jump into the code for this problem. So we're gonna need a stack data structure of strings, right? And each string in our stack is going to represent a file or directory name, right? And so in order to have this work properly, we need to split on the slash character like we discussed. So we're gonna say for string file path dot split on the slash. And so after performing this split operation, everything inside of this array calculation will be a file or directory name. And it also could contain a period or a double period. So it makes our logic much simpler. So the first edge case we need to handle is if our file, if our file is equal to a double period, right? If it's equal to a double period, then that means we're trying to go up a directory. That means we need to remove the previous directory in our stack, the last directory in our stack. But if our stack is empty, we don't wanna do that. So we're gonna to need to have a check here to say, if our stack is not empty, then we can pop, right? So cool, we handled that edge case. The next thing we wanna do is add the file to our stack, but we don't wanna add everything into our stack. If we have a period or a double period, those should not be in our canonical path. So we're gonna say if the file is not empty, right? Because we don't want like an empty, you know, string in our canonical path, that wouldn't make sense. And the file does not equal, right? Does not equal a period. And it does not equal a double period. Then we're just gonna say stack, dot push the file. Very simple. And when we exit from this loop, now we need to start building up our canonical path. So this step will be building our canonical path, right? So we're gonna initialize a string builder here. String builder. We'll say result equals new string builder. and we just need to loop over our stack from left to right. So we could say for string file stack result dot append. And we're we need to make sure to separate all of these files and directory names by a slash. So we'll say append slash dot append file. And then finally, if our result is not an empty string, then we would just return our result, right? So return if our result dot length is greater than zero, then we're just gonna return our result. However, if our result is empty, then we just wanna return a singular slash, right? And the reason why we, we need this extra edge case um, is example two actually illustrates this pretty well. If we had slash dot dot slash in our first for loop above, we would essentially not add anything into our stack because we would, uh, we would do a dot split, which would give us just a dot dot and obviously we don't add dot dot into our stack. So by the time we go to build our canonical path, right? Our stack would be empty, right? So that's why you have to handle this extra edge case where if the result that you're building is actually empty, then just return it a single uh, slash.
So let's make sure this solution works. And there we go. So our time complexity is going to be big O of N because we have to essentially touch every character in our path a single time. And this is because of line four when we perform our split operation. Under the hood, it has to look at each character to do that. And then we also have to, you know, loop over all of the file names and loop over all of the contents in our stack, but those would be maxed out at big O of N, where N is the number of characters in our path. And then as for our space complexity, that's also big O of N, where N is the number of characters in our path, and that is because of our stack data structure that we initialize in the beginning of our algorithm. And that is how you solve the problem, simplify path. This is a really popular problem asked at Facebook. So if you're planning to interview there, hopefully this makes sense. Um, yeah, this is a really popular problem by them. Before I let you go, definitely check out my algorithm platform, Algos with Michael. If you want to learn the patterns to solve a lot of these complicated interview problems, it's a great resource to do so. And with that, I'll catch you guys later.